Yeah. On to Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson was the next big thing that hit the headlines. Anyone mm-hmm. who is a child or has been a child and can remember their childhood has mm-hmm. gone running through the woods or whatnot and mm-hmm. hit their legs on a branch and you could get cut. Mm-hmm. Somebody could have hit you with a branch mm-hmm. playing around and you mm-hmm. could get cut. It was not intentional. That was mm-hmm. not your intent when mm-hmm. you hit somebody with a switch is not to draw blood. Mm-hmm. With that said, my problem and from my knowledge of this situation, mm-hmm. Adrian Peterson, I'm not going to say he's an absentee father, but he's a part-time father. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, as a part-time father, you revoke all privileges to discipline your children. Mm-hmm. If you're not going to put, and again, this is just me and my beliefs. Mm-hmm. I look, I, right. I've come from a split household. I know what it's like. And I had my dad try to step in and discipline me. It didn't work. Right. Why? Motherfucker, you're not there. Right. So to physically discipline your child, mm-hmm. I'm not saying you don't have a right to. But you probably shouldn't go that old school way that you were raised parenting. Mm-hmm. And again, that's what it comes from. Right. It you, is. If you know one way and you're raised one way, that's the way you know. That's the way it's worked. That's the way it works for you. Why would you change? Right. And this and this is the thing. I and I'm I'm going to say this. And we saw it on our message board. I think in in it, it's not so much color, it's Mm-mm. culture. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think when you think of blacks, Latinos, whites from the south. They're very accustomed to that type of, yes. of switches. I, 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 you know, switches, shoes, shoes anything switches, to I grandma can grab a hold of. Bam, that's how it was. And, you know, that means, I think, and, and I'm not defending or condoning what Adrian Peterson did. I think I, I agree very much with what George said. I think he broke it down perfect. I think, I do think this. I think when somebody goes, I'm going to get a switch and they're thinking about it, they get the switch and then they get the kid. I think, if you did something, if you were a kid, a child, and I like, don't do that, George, go get a switch. Or well, I'm going to go get a switch and I'm going to punish you. I'm thinking about what I'm doing. I'm doing it. Now, if you do something, I'm like, smack you or hit you, close fist. That's a fucking angry, fucked up motherfucker. Now, both of the situations are very touching. The famous slippery slope shit. Some people are going to be discreet, but a motherfucker who hauls off and beats the shit out of their kid without thinking and is just aggressive. It's- that to me is a person, and not that Peterson doesn't need counseling. Maybe he needs counseling the way he was raised, but I think that's more indicative of child child abuse. Um, I don't think Adrian Peterson never denied. He was like, "Yeah, I, I did this. I did this." Like, he was like, "What?" The and he fuck? told he texted the mother of the child that it happened, and it's so late. I'm like, "How did this get out? Why did it get out? It happened so many months ago." Is she? And, and, and the first time he, the first months, that's the whole thing. It happened months ago because there was a first grand jury that did not indict him. People fairly realized that this was brought up, and they, then it was brought up again. The doctor was like, oh, "It could be shot." Then, it, then this is happened. That how it got out from the doctors? Yeah. So, so <clears throat> I, my thing is, Adrian, cut the check. See the kid when you can. Don't try to be a parent in the sense of yeah. disciplining them, unless you're going to spend more time. Now, I understand your job takes you away. You're in Minnesota. They're in Texas. Yada yada. You're not there. As much as you should be if you think you should be physically disciplining your child. Mm-hmm. That's just, again, me. Now, one thing, the point I wanted to bring up is mm-hmm. the big thing last year was concussions. Mm-hmm. There's brain injuries. Mm-hmm. There's trauma. You mm-hmm. get hit in the head a lot. Now, if you look at the if you look at the rash of players mm-hmm. who have been in this thing, you have three running backs. Mm-hmm. You linebacker. Have, you have a linebacker. Mm-hmm. Now, I've, I've heard, and again, maybe I'm wrong, the equivalent of a running back and a linebacker in that short distance, in that 10 yard period, when they make contact at the speed at which they're moving, it's equivalent to a car accident. Mm-hmm. About a 30 mile, t- somewhere between 10 and, I-, I don't know the speed. It's a car accident. Okay, let's just say on average, you have 10 of these in a game. And to me, right. that's way below average for a running back. Or oh, linebacker. Far, far we'll just go average, 10. Right. Mm-hmm. That's 160 car accidents in a year if you play every game. Yeah. Now, let's say you go to the playoffs and you play four more. Mm-hmm. That's 200 car accidents in one year. And I think that's how these guys get, and I can be pugilistic syndrome and stuff like that. Right, so I'm thinking there's going to be, this is going to get worse for the NFL instead of get better. You have Greg Hardy, in my opinion of everything we've read next to McDonald, Greg Hardy needs to be banished oh, and I'm the first from the one, NFL. Uh, yeah, and, I'm and, not and, talking about suspended. I'm talking about... Go find See a new job. Later. Like, like this, that is, this is just a guy that was jealous in an angry fucking rage. And, you know, I, and you know, you, each case you've got to handle different. And we, and we saw it on the boards. It, it's like, you know what? The thing about this country, you're, you're, you're innocent until proven He's guilty. He's already been proven guilty and once. He, and he is, he has already been proven guilty. But he got the audio tape. Since he appeals it, that account goes away. I don't understand what kind of fucked up court system you have in North Carolina, but if, in my opinion, if you're found guilty on this with the mound, 
Well, that um, evidence. Mm -hmm. There is no appealing. Right. You're not. There's. There's nothing to appeal. And that's you what, are a genuine piece of shit. And that's what the NFL should do. If you're found guilty, like Greg Hart, Hardy was initially, then you're suspended indefinitely until and, your appeal. Now, if the appeal proves otherwise, then you have a chance to get back and play football in the NFL. Did you hear his voice on the tape? Oh. That dude, there's no place for a guy like you, and I'm not going to say in our society, and maybe they say people are unjustly in the prison system, mm -hmm. there's an 8 by 10 for you, because you you need some, f I'm, I'm, maybe you had a fucked up childhood, and, and that's what we you always want to pin this shit on, that dude needs help. And, and you know what, some of it's, what people are going to say, it's fucked up childhood, you know what, a lot of it is this inflated fucking egos. No you way! Yeah. You're telling me a player who goes to the high school, and has been told, you just... Oh, oh, look, you got your name right? Oh, that's a B. That's, yeah. You go to college, college, and then, like my father has said, How about you, that, teacher? You, you know what LSU players do on their very first day? You know who they meet? The most important person. The guy who's going to take their test. Mm -hmm. Do you think Greg Hardy has ever been pressured to read or to learn or to educate himself? No. He's always been told how good he is, and he's pushed through the system. Pushed through the system now, all the way now, to the NFL. Now, with that being said, we don't know. He, he could be a scholar. We don't know that. But we're, right. the tip, a lot of these athletes typical. The typical are so put up on a pedestal, and they have fucking inflated egos. Mm -hmm. And it comes to that. Those Look at the quarterback at Florida State. The man thinks he's untouchable. He has two sexual assault cases. And again, I look at another quarterback in the NFL who some of you are so rabidly to defend. Mm -hmm. Rabid to defend. Mm -hmm. Just because he wasn't found guilty in a court of law. Neither is Jameis. Yeah. But I bet you sit there and you look at Jameis and you look at him a lot differently. That's you know the what? Kind of then maybe you should look in your own backyard. Yeah. And, and that's the kind of thing that bothers me about that. That You know, you, you, you get a you get the same person will sit back and look at a quarterback that is those charges have been brought up against him twice, you know, with the rape. Right. And and then you look at somebody like Jameis Winston and they'll bash the fuck out of him. Right. I, I just know. don't see me. I play the shit straight down the middle. Yeah. Both of them are fucked, fucked up. up. They're both you, fucked up. And Jameis right now, look, the only thing, the only thing he has going for him is that he's 20 and he's from the South and he's retarded. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't anything else because he's obviously yeah, retarded. I, I, he to stand up in the student union and yell, I don't give a shit what song it was, what it was. <laughs> I don't care if somebody wrote it on paper and said, Jameis, read this. Motherfucker, you have to be retarded. How do you do go it? out and get, fucker, fucker in the pussy. Shorty, <laughs> go get coded. Be on the short bus. You obviously are special ed because you're too fucking stupid to realize you are fucking up a golden situation. Oh. You're fucking up the payday. You're fucking up Florida State's football program. You're fucking up the boosters. Mm -hmm. They will not be able to cover this shit up forever. This is the thing with college football players and, and it's, there's always a certain everybody has a certain like when I was 20 I was fucking immature. I would be the guy that was doing the stupid stuff. But, Dude, but, you, but you would have your own you would have like you <laughs> I would be in trouble all the time. You know, how they, back in the head like, you, know, you know how they make spoof Twitter accounts? Uh huh. Like uh, LeBron's lawn? <laughs> it would be Kevin's penis. <laughs> that, that would be somebody's <laughs> well, Twitter handle. Some Kevin's penis. Well, or <laughs> Kevin's dirty shoe. Or <laughs> Kevin's left hook. That, right. You would have that many different Twitter and, accounts. And I, I, I look at that and I'm just like, I didn't think I, I was ever a bad guy. I just was stupid. Silly. You want me to tell them what I said earlier? No, no. Come on. Let's... <laughs> No, I can't do that one. No, 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 no. Because I'm a you're a ninth guy. <laughs> I'm the ninth guy. <laughs> Fucking everyone's girl. I all day was long. Not <laughs> ninth guy. Just kidding. I would assume that happened. <laughs> so anyway, this is the thing. Okay, you 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 look at this. <laughs> you look at this, and it's like, okay, you got a twenty year old. So. There's a little bit of, you know, you need, they need mentors to come in. They need handlers. No, they, they, they do. They need mentors. They need guys. They always think of it when you come into the pros. But what about a retired football player to come into university? Say you have a retired Florida State professional football player. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders to come in and mentor. Talk to me on Skype. Talk to me here. Hey, talk that to me. That was such a tough, in all honesty, just to, to get away from it, because there actually have been some good things that have mm -hmm. gone on in this NFL season. Right. Devin Hester returns a punt Thursday night and breaks the uh, Deion Sanders all-time touchdown record. And after the game, the, be the best that Devin Hester could in expressing himself, because I'm sure it was an overwhelming moment, expressed his gratitude for all that Deion Sanders has done for him. That is what the NFL needs to do right now. Yeah. That The NFL should be pushing that video clip to as many places as they can and try to get ahead of this as this, much as they can. It, they just, because college has an issue. Mm -hmm. We've known that. We know players get played, we, players get paid and everything else. And now, 
And the idea that Florida State had to finally backtrack and suspend this kid for the first game, the university needs to realize they are bigger than the player. They uh, have to be bigger than a player. And this is the thing, man. I, I, I heard an interview on, on ESPN the other day, and it was the, the offensive line, the old offensive line coach for Miami. And he was talking about what happened with Rich, Richie Incognito, Incognito and stuff. And he was like, look, you know, him and uh, what's the other guy who was saying he was being bullied? It's, they, the, it's the dude... Um, you talking about the guy who got bullied? Yeah. Or um, they were. Be- he was saying basically the coach was saying, "Look, these guys were best friends. They hung out all the time. They hung out all the time." He goes, he goes, he goes. There was nothing wrong. He goes, and then it was like he was getting pressured. You know, when something went bad, he goes, he goes. They talked about stuff. He goes, the other guy said the fucked up things and and made homophobic slurs and stuff like this. He goes, it. They were always buddy. He goes, I would never look at anything or suspect anything was going. He goes, because I'm 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 talking about. I'm there to win football games, you know, and that's how Jimbo Fisher and these other guys are. They can't just be focused on one player because they have to have a whole fucking game plan, and they're responsible for a whole fucking team, a whole unit. But so the worst it, part is, is when the key piece to winning that football game is in trouble. And, and you know what? That's why in these universities, you need to say, okay, unfortunately, can't happen for all the the students, you know, that are on the football team because you know what? They're not all going to be NFL players. They're not all going to be under the microscope. Only your key components are going to be under the microscope. Your big time players. And you know what? You might want to consider having former graduates, former football players come in and mentor these kids to make sure they stay on the right track. Otherwise, they're going to do stupid shit like James just did the other day, jumping up on the lunch table and screaming fucking lyrics to a fucked up song that's full of profanity. Now, if another kid did that, people would laugh and giggle about it. It would have never made the news. It That's would why never I'm saying the social media is mm-hmm. the only way to death. So, <clears throat> anyway, and then um, NFL outside of the, the stadiums. <laughs> right, in the stadiums. In, in the stadiums, it's, it's been an entertaining two weeks. It has been. Uh, week three is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, you won't see this video. The Eagles play the Redskins. Mm-hmm. Um, the Eagles defense made Trent Richardson and Ahmad Bradshaw look like Gale Sayers and I don't know who's the big black dude out of Cleveland. What's his name? I'm not even sure. I can't the remember. old school dude, Jim Jim, oh, Jim, Brown. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. I yeah. mean, they look like great running backs. Yeah. So I have a feeling that Alfred Morris and Kirk Cousins are going to march into Philadelphia tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and it is going to be a, I don't necessarily say a nail biter. I think it's going to be a touchdown difference either way. Either right. team could either win this game by, by a touchdown. touchdown. Philly's, the, Philly's the favorite to win by 8.5 uh, right now. And I don't see how that's possible. Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't protect the quarterback well enough. You have two ends that are going to get up the field. Barring any injuries, Redskins win this by... Nine. Nine. That, Nine. The, I, 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 George is a Philly fan. I'm a Redskins fan. I, I see it going the other way. I just, I do think the Redskins defense is much improved. Um, and, and I do, I feel like you guys lost Mikhail, uh, Williams up the middle. He's one of your better linebackers. He's out this, this, you this. You mean Michael Kendricks? Michael, I don't know William. Michael the Kendricks. Fuck is Mikhail Williams? I, I don't know what the fuck I was saying. Michael Kendricks. Michael Kendricks. So Michael Kendricks is out. And yeah, that hurts. That hurts you guys. Um, I think the whole game, is going to depend on the Redskins front. I think if the Redskins they're gonna, front, they're going to be up. They're going to be the new Nick Foles jersey. They're yeah. going to have a burgundy Nick Foles. Jersey. If they can, if those ends, you know, if, if fucking Kerrigan and Arakpo can get in, those outside linebackers can get in and put pressure, in, and maybe uh, 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 Jason up the middle and disrupt it. But if he, if if they allow just a little bit of time and he can hit fucking Sproles, and or I'm just, thinking. Screen. I, I would screen the shit out that, of you guys the entire the second half, and that's and I and think, that's what they did last year. And I think that's what they'll do. And I think because of that, the Redskins are not going to have the speed to be able to handle that, especially with two guys you know, that are good. You know who's now. happiest about that Deshaun Jackson uh, acquirement? D'Angelo Hall, because now yeah. he doesn't have to get roasted by him. Because yeah. you go back and you look at some old highlight tapes, most of them are Deshaun Jackson running straight past D'Angelo Hall. Yeah. D'Angelo Hall couldn't cover a wet blanket. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Why the Redskins re-signed him was one of the worst re-signings, I think, in the history of the NFL. <laughs> he's a fucking bum. He's overrated. He's been a loud mouth his whole entire career. His best years were in Atlanta. Check last time he played there. I cannot fucking stand him. And he causes a lot of fucking penalties. He and really that, does. And he creates, in my opinion, he's got to create turmoil in the locker room. I don't know, because he, he seems to be, he's really tight with your boy Deshaun. And well, with that said, I'm glad Kevin brought that up, because <laughs> last week, after the game, because I, I called enough of it, because the Eagles played the late night, so I got to watch the Redskins game, and I got to tune in just in time to see the replay of RG3. I never want to see a player get hurt. That's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. If the Redskins sign you to a long-term deal, 
I don't know who you have naked photos of, but that will be the snow job of the year. Number two. This, this is the thing, real quick, and I'm going to interrupt George with that. You know, you had the option to have them to a three year or four year rookie, rookie deal, and the Redskins did four years. They were smart. So now they, now you have him, if he does, if and when he does come back this season, and he might not because he might not have a job. He might be in the place that Kirk Cousins was last week. If he does get the job back and he starts and he performs well and then he has a whole other season, then he might have the opportunity. I don't know. That's a tall order, man, because this guy keeps missing I'm so much time. Hmm? I'm not paying him. Yeah. I, 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 but right now, if the way I see it, I probably wouldn't pay RG3 a big big amount of money because you just haven't had any and the thing is is that he's not a pocket quarterback if that doesn't mean he can't become a pocket quarterback people but the bottom line is if you want to play and all have an offense that has that type of quarterback then Kirk Cousins is your man if you want to wait to develop him and hope that he develops and stuff then then yeah RG3 is a better athlete or anything but right now winning games and I don't, I don't think whether RG3 becomes the quarterback pack a quarterback or not, I don't think at this time he possesses the accuracy or the touch to run that system. And the reason I say that is look at Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. Andy, you, if you guys don't remember, Jay Gruden came over from coaching Andy Dalton. I think he was the offensive coordinator slash quarterback coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's that's where he, he cut was, his teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Andy Dalton, I he's turned into a pretty decent pro. I'm not going to say he's elite yet, but mm -hmm. I'd say top 10, top 10 quarterback. And then you look at someone like, well, look what happened in Philly. Who was there backing up your starter last year? That's not my point. My no, point no, is, no, 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 I want to, I'll get to that mm -hmm. in a second. Now, before I lose my train of thought, mm -hmm. an article came out on Monday or Tuesday and I read it and it was from somebody inside of the Redskins organization who, of course, don't put my name out there, mm -hmm. said, have you ever seen a team get more excited when their starting quarterback and prized free agent pickup go down on back-to-back -back plays. I do not think Deshaun Jackson is well-liked in Washington. And right I think on. that is truly the reason he left Philadelphia. Unfortunately, my organization did a very chicken shit, childish thing and tried mm -hmm. to make up a story. I would have had more respect for the organization to come out and chip Kelly go, you know what? I have a system. I need it in place. Deshaun doesn't want to play by my rules. You have to go. Yeah, it's a distraction. I mean, the bottom that line is a distraction. should have been what you did. Mm -hmm. Instead, he gets comes down to Washington. He teams up with D'Angelo Hall, and I think those two are just a bad fit for an organization. Yeah, and I think Again, that's just this, me that, and my opinion. And I, I'm gonna disagree with George. I, I think right now, D D D Deshaun Jackson has done nothing right now in the football field for himself because he, he's it's very young. But I think the moment, if like for example, when RG three went deep for him, he grabbed, he dropped the ball. I think the moment, and we all know this, when you win, you make big plays, everything goes away. Oh, everything goes does. away. That's the truth. We if, said winning cures everything. If, if if he can't prove himself within the next four or five games, then he's going to start getting a little aggravated. You might see his personality come out. We saw it in Philadelphia. If he starts making big plays and everybody's going to be slapping him high five, you're the man and everything, and he's going to feel very comfortable. That's how it's going to play out. Oh, no, I totally okay. understand. Uh, I told you before the season started, I think what was going to happen is in the preseason, Sean's going to go back. Go deep. RG3 was going to hit him. All the, not you included, but all the Redskins would come out and go over to the Super Bowl. That didn't happen. I don't think he was healthy. I don't think either one of them had been healthy. The Redskins. So with a sprained AC joint, let me tell you, Deshaun Jackson will stay away from the, because the kid we picked up from Baltimore, mm -hmm. that corner, mm -hmm. he plays with Kerry Williams. Yeah. He will fuck Deshaun Jackson up. Right. He has no problem sticking his nose in anything. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of corner I like. That's the kind of corner the city needs. Mm -hmm. And Kerry Williams was very critical of the defense last year. Yeah. He said, we are some punk bitches. The thing that, the thing that, if you notice with Kirk Cousins, and we, I know George and I are harping on the Redskins Eagles game, but, uh, is Kirk Cousins, if you notice who he was hitting, he was hitting Niles Paul, and he was hitting all the second team guys, because that's who he throws that's the ball he to. Plays with. Now, uh, another thing Redskins fans have to realize is that when he starts taking the first string snaps, which he's doing now, starts dealing with the first string receivers, obviously Deshaun, obviously uh, Pierre Garçon, Time you know, gonna he does, it, things going to be different. He's going to, you know, if it, if it develops the right way and then he gets Jordan Reed back because he doesn't have his number one tight end in there, and he starts having all these weapons, and you know, the difference between Cousins and, and RG3 is Cousins sits in that pocket and he's got that quick release. He just waits and waits. So he looks at his first, second, third, fourth. He looks at all his options, whereas RG3 probably looks at two. Yeah. I'm getting the fuck out of here. He he could end up being really good. I think Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback right now. Right now. As a yeah. quarterback. Mm -hmm. But in the as the NFL quarterback right now, he's the better right. NFL quarterback. And, and people want to lump Russell Wilson and RG3 into the same thing. And I don't. I think Russell Wilson is a pocket passer who can run. Yeah. RG3 <clears throat> is a quarterback who wants to run, who gets nervous and is afraid of, oh, my God, if I throw the ball away, then my stats go down. Da, da, da. I think he has too much going on in his life. And you see the same thing as well. I was getting ready to say earlier, um, 
was Nick Foles. You see Nick Foles and you see Kirk Cousins. They both came out at the same time. They 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 were competitors of one another. And, what the hell is That's that? That's the mailman showing. Yeah, anyway. So they were both our competitors. And so you you see that, right? And you see Nick Foles and then you see, you know, Kirk Cousins, both coming out of the NFL at the same time. All right. Now, in Philadelphia, you had Mike Vick hit, playing his backup. And we see Nick Foles started, third year starter. He's there. He's running the show. Same type of playing style kind as RG3. You got it with Mike Vick. But he's he's now he's gone. He's up in uh, if Kirk Cousins gets on a roll and rips off five or six hard. wins, it's going to be hard. If, for if, he, if he goes, if he wins four out of the next five, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard. If he wins four out of the next five, it's going to be hard to bring in a quarterback that is rusty, that has been in a cast. I mean, and, and people, you know, this is how the league is. This is what people have to realize. What have you done for me lately? Well, no, it's not just it's just not the Redskins organization. It is about jerseys and selling things. Subway commercials. You see RG3. He is huge. Everywhere. That's Everywhere. what I'm saying. He has too much going on. Everywhere. So Adidas commercials, Subway commercials, mm -hmm. this commercial, that commercial. How now, much you get on the field and learn how to play? Yeah, and you see that in the NFL. It's like, well, you know, he, he's a face of, face of the NFL. One of the face of the NFL. Why is he on the bench? You know? Anyway, um, let's go through the rest of the games. Really 49ers quick. look good. 49ers look good. Buffalo looks really good. Yeah, they got with that? They Buffalo even... looks good. They got a new coach. They're playing ball. They're playing great defense. Damn it. San Diego is coming, is coming there, and let me tell you something. Your favorite guy, Philip Rivers, will be going there. But Phillip the thing about this, ass off. I'm going to go with Buffalo in this game, and why I'm going to go with Buffalo is because San Diego's got to make that trip all the way across the country early in the morning. Then you've got Dallas and St. Louis. Now, St. for Louis. enough of you that follow the show, I'm actually going with San Diego. You are. <laughs> hey, they look good. I mean, obviously, what they should, they did against the Seahawks last week. Now, then you have uh, Dallas uh, visiting St. Louis. What do you think about that? Who gives a shit? Neither was because oh, we both hate the Cowboys. Then you got obviously Houston going to New York. Now that's interesting. Jets or Giants? The Giants. Who gives you a got fuck? Got JJ Watts. You know JJ Watts is going to be all up in fucking Eli Manning's grill. Yep. All up in his grill. And then, um, and then you got a slew of other games. But anyway, we're not going to well, go into that. The, we're the, one, the, the person I'd like to discuss. Who you, who you want to talk about? Who are you going to talk about? What are you going to say? What do you mean? What are you about to say? Uh, I was, I was just going to say we're not going to go into every game because we're going to talk about it after. after okay. Fact. <clears throat> Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. In this preseason, in this offseason, he says, I want to play for as long as I don't suck. Well, I'm not saying you suck, but I'm saying there's a steep decline in your ability, and you don't look that good. Mm -hmm. So, over or under three more years for Tom Brady? Three. Is he going to play less than three years or more than three years? I'd say more. I say less. Yeah. I think I think if he can if he shows up and plays, and the thing is, is what I love with you New England fans. He doesn't have the weapons. He doesn't have the weapons. Whose fault is that? And this is it, whose it, fault. It, is this that? is the thing. This is the thing where I argue with Tom Brady because people say Super Bowl like the Joe Montana, Montana shit. Over this a decade is ago, I, that's when he got in his last Super Bowl. Right. It's been over ten years since he ten played years. the Super Bowl. Right. And and that's when he had that a shit crazy now? defense. New England had great no, defenses. Back one more then. one more question. When's the last? And I'm I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes me being a dick. When's the last time the Redskins were in a Super Bowl? Oh, my God. That's 91? Okay. Yeah. So that's what, 20, well, 20 years? Over 20, 20 years? 20, 23 years. So when do you get to stop playing that card? Yeah. Is that card just... Like, when you're dealing with somebody like me who cheers for a team who's been to the Super Bowl once and lost, and now mm -hmm. my team has been to the Super Bowl more recently than yours. Oh, yeah. And definitely. granted, they lost. And I they've been a better franchise. as. A, but see, that doesn't count. Because we, we're not going to talk about that. Right, because right, all right. we got to talk about. Right. So how long do you think in a, a sports argument do you get to play, well, my team won the Super Bowl. How long do you get to play that card? I think it depends on what the argument is based from. If you're talking about, I don't think people should go back and look at what, it's like that, the famous song, Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? That's, that's what my, it's about. And that's how it's, I live it. You know? I mean, <laughs> I, I, even last season, you know, Seahawks fans could be like, we're what, whatever. I go, okay, that's last fucking season. This is 2014. Okay. Now if George starts Captain talking, History. Yeah, Cap Captain. Now, now, now. That's why I said it, it's based. <laughs> it's based on what the argument is. Oh. Now, if George Cap sits, sits there and says, you know, well, you guys suck, whatever. I'm always going to say, well, you know what? We're a better franchise than you guys. You know, and I when I say franchise, I mean franchise. And 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 why I say that is because. We are a better franchise than the Eagles, and we're worth more than the Eagles. And it's about Frank. We're a better, yes, we're a better franchise. Okay. And the only franchise that is better than the Washington, value dollar value wise, Dallas is Dallas. That's it. How much did the Buffalo Bills just sell for? Well, the, I'm not. How much did the Buffalo Bills just sell for? Uh, One point two billion dollars. Yeah. So you're telling me mm -hmm. 
that the Buffalo Bills are worth one point two billion dollars. Yeah, but, but that's more than the Redskins. Right. Well, no. How much are the Cowboys? You, you, you got to remember. This is what you have to remember, George. When a franchise sells, it's just like being having a house on the street, and then all of a sudden, one house, oh, your house is valued at this, but then the house down the street sells for more. Oh, than, no, I know how that everything works. goes up. Right. Right. But do much? you do you think the Clippers are worth more than the Lakers? Yo, oh, hell yeah, the team real team. <laughs> Come on, no, man. man. Question the Lakers. Ask. The guy just bought up everything. If if somebody was to buy the Washington Redskins right now, if they were bids for the Washington Redskins, that shit would go through the ceiling. It would be crazy. Well, crazy. I tell you what, the crown jewel, if he can pull this one off, mm -hmm. is turning RFK into the new Redskins stadium. If he can, if he can do it's that. It's not turning RFK, it's demolishing RFK. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying to take that spot where RFK mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. yeah. knock that motherfucker down, put up a dome, mm -hmm. your team is going to be five, six billion dollars. Mm -hmm. If, if he can pull that off, mm -hmm. which I think he's going to try to do, I think that's his crown jewel, what he wants to do, and he's going to name that shit his stadium. He'll put his name on it. Mm -hmm. That's, no, you, you, put, after he spends all that money, he's going to need somebody to name this. Thing. He's going to need. Oh yeah, he'll need the company. money, but yeah. just like dummy did in Dallas. Yeah. But anyway, but the <clears throat> NFL season is 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 great. It's underway. And so um, is the college season. And the college season is say there's games going on right now. As George and I talk, but we're going to cut back to that earlier in the next week after the games have been played and then the, the NFL games have been played because yeah, we, we've been taking what, three three games in. So what's that out of sixteen games? What what? Is that Almost twenty five percent of the season because we got what? a bye week too that we have to do. Cool. Anything else we need to talk about? Baseball. You don't want to fucking throw in your little Nats thing or I'm, I'm, Orioles? I might get too excited, man. Why? I'm, I'm gonna, you know, or I'm, I'm just happy because the Nats and the O's are in this shit right now. They're in, okay? George is mad because the Yankees still on the fucking bit, but they still have a shot. The Yankees do. Stop. I'm just saying, man. Stop. I'm trying to make you feel better, man. I'm just happy to see Derek Jeter retire with man, the best pussy percentage ever. <laughs>